five, four, three. Oh wait, we're already live. Hello. Hey, this is Russ with Wings Safer Historical Fencing, and thank you for putting up with our giant long hiatus. It was mostly unplanned and was, um, let's just say the summer and fall was significantly more chaotic than I thought it was. Let me check that camera real quick, because my tripod's dying, and it looks like I'm tilted. Yep, we're tilted. Always. We knew there was something off kilter, right? Well, stand up straight, sheesh. Cat's over there trolling us. Okay, so we're going to start moving from the same thing we did before. We're going to start speeding up, but do not progress until you can do all of these fluidly and comfortably. Back in stance, please. Back up just a little tiny bit. And I'm going to stand sort of short but instructory here so you have room. So come slightly more forward. Okay, good. Then you have room to make the swing. Okay. okay, from my bind of third, she's going to do a disengagement. That disengagement is from the wrist. She's just doing a little spiral forward. Okay? Notice she's not ending up here. This gains her nothing. From here, she's now past my blade and I'm in trouble and I have to make an emergency parry. And while I'm doing that, she has a safe tempo to do anything she wants. So show it again. Good. Back. Direct cut flank. Good. Show it again, make sure you really emphasize the elbow. Pop, great. All right, direct circular cut to the head. Pop. And back. Swung cut to the inside face. Great. And back. Swung cut to the stomach. Great. And back. Swung cut to the inside of the arm, true edge. Great. Now, one refinement you can make to this is to make sure you're moving the tip a lot, but leaving this relatively static because the upper arm is rotating. So the next time Kat does this, she's going to try to leave her hilt a little bit closer to the line of battle instead of way out here because this uncovers her, okay? Watch the difference. Swung interface cut. Good. Now make the rotation, make sure the cut's coming out of the elbow. Yes. Good. Swung stomach cut. Good. Inner arm with the true edge. Good. Inner arm with the false edge. Good. Now in this case, it's the three quarter position. So you're going to hit here behind the guard or if I'm extended here, but the hand position, unlike the living Hussar lineage is not going to be here to come up and rake because that's going to be awkward the way that Arlo and the Italo-Hungarian set up. It's going to be a rising cut this way. Pop. One, two, three. The two thirds hand position is a rising diagonal. Bang. One more time with the true edge and then the pulse. Good. So here we see a difficulty. Cat is poisoned by the other lineage. <laughs> so when you come around for your swing, from here, then rotate. Bang. As opposed to coming in here and going, whoop. Hmm. Feel the difference? Yes. So you're absolutely going to make a cut, and it's going to be a potent cut, sweeping right through my bicep or whatever you can hit. Okay. Now this is partly difficult because I'm not actually... I'm slightly too close and I'm slightly out of position for the sake of our room. So scooch backwards ever so slightly. Okay, see if that works. False okay, edge. False edge. So. It's a rising diagonal cut. And you are tilting your wrist. Keep your wrist straight. And notice how that would have your blade here. And the elbow has to be here if that's going to be a swung cut. And so the elbow is on a diagonal different lineage. In my lineage, we want the elbow down. This chicken wing I've made videos about is bad, right? Kat has internalized that to the point where she's having trouble allowing her elbow to be diagonal because this has been trained out of her. But for Arlo, you need it. Good to know. As Tim Manchin said, humility is learning the other dudes are. Okay. Try it again. Diagonal cut. Let that elbow come out to the side. 
There you go. Around and <laughs> not quite there. Let me demonstrate. Come over here. So this is one you're going to have to work on. That's so insane. All right, so I'm here. I'm the third. I come around and I go pop. I'm going to do this with the false edge. I come around and I don't do this, which is the wrist version. Merz loves this stuff. Some of the other Austro-Hungarians love these angled false edge cuts. In fact, sometimes Arlo loves these angled false edge cuts, but not at this point in the book. I'm coming around. Bang. Pop, pop, mm. pop, 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 depending on where the hand guard position is. Try it one more time. Okay. And go. Mm -hmm. Circular, out of the elbow, out of the elbow. This is a powerful cut. This is not a finesse cut the way we deliver it. Nope, you did it the other way again. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so why did I not edit this out of the video and just give a perfect presentation? Because... Shame. It... No, shame. No, has nothing to do with that. If you are also coming out of a different lineage, you're going to be infected by the constraints of the old lineage. Letting those constraints go to perform a technique a new way is quite difficult, especially if you're not accustomed to lineage hopping. Now, a dancer who's accustomed to dancing in different styles is used to it, and every once in a while they'll goof up and put a little bit of modern in their belly dance or a little bit of contemporary ballet in their modern, etc., etc. But you can see Kat's got some homework here, right? She's got to work on that so she doesn't put coffee in her tea and tea in her coffee simultaneously, a thing we've talked about before. So she's going to practice the heck out of that. And then we're going to move on to the next bind. You were my brother, Katakin. This training montage brought to you by Wing Saber Historical Fencing. If you have similar household appliances in your home, you can practice on just about anything as long as it gives you a good target so you can make your cuts from the elbow nice and pretty. Can't make a little more from the elbow. Yep, even a little more from the elbow. It's the exact opposite of how we do our pulse There's no finesse here at all. Yes, there you go. It's a big old hammer board. My poor coat rack! Sorry, coat rack. Fresh from murdering the coat rack, it's Cat Larange. Cat's gonna be the one in guard because, according to Cat, there is one true parry of joy and hope and life, and it is fourth. She loves fourth. Now we're gonna adjust slightly for Arlo because that was the sack. You were in a beautiful the sack. So it'd be about here. So, from Cat's bind of fourth, I disengage. Now notice my hand position. Those of you who are accustomed to my lineage thinking to do this because hit the false edge with the wrist, that's not what we're doing. We're coming around the basket and threatening that flank because then she has to cover that or else it's just squick, right? While she covers that, we smack her and giggle. So, disengage. Four. Coupe to the head. Or, make sure I have enough space, swung cut to the outside of the head, swung cut to the flank, swung coupe cut to the outer arm. Depending on how your opponent holds their guard, it may look a little bit more like that, that's fine. And disengage cut to the outer arm. Pop. I would normally do that false edge and giggle all out of the wrist. Not for Arlo. Arlo, oh, there's my thrust. And if she goes to cover, pop. Bang, out of the elbow, okay? Work it over and over again. What you will probably notice if you're not accustomed to this is that the disengage drives you nuts. So let's see it again. Be a little, a little less than a second. I am going around the basket while advancing my point. From here, she has a choice. Do nothing. 
or do something and give me an empty tempo. So I hit cut, bang, whoop, there it is. And look, there's our action, so now I'm safe to move to the next step. Okay? So make sure you're not just doing a circle. A disengagement is not just dipsy doodling in a circle 14,000 times. No, it is advancing a threat. And if you don't advance that threat, you leave them more than capable of just going, no. Let's see that. Bang, I disengage, but I don't do anything else. And as she sees this disengagement, I am leaving the vine, but there's no threat. What does she do? Smack. Granted, this is a preliminary cutting exercise, but practice it correctly from the get-go, getting that extension so that your disengagement is a valid threat. All right, we'll come back in a minute, and we can see what this looks like from fifth. And we are back. I'm going to stand in an approximation of fifth, given our ceilings in space. And Kat is going to be in my bind of fifth, so she's cut at my head, and I've gone pop. So it's very important when you practice this, don't stand in a high third. This is not a high third bind. This is a fifth. I have defended my head, which I forgot to mention when we practice this, so it'll be fun. All right, she's going to disengage around my basket, and I am threatened. I feel very threatened. Good. Go back. Disengage and have your hand horizontal, palm down just for shits and giggles so people can see what that looks like. I also feel very threatened. This is time for me to do an emergency something, and while I'm doing that emergency something, she's going to ride that and smack me and giggle. Okay, so I've defended. Cut ahead. She disengages. Not that. Do the circle. Yep. Good. Go back. I cut. She cuts flank, bang, comes back, cuts inside face, and notice how she has to get the swing here, because my tip is way out there, and back, or, or vertical cut, it's a face cut, there you go, and chest, and back, and scooch that way slightly, good, there, actually it's both, it's slightly this way. A little more. A little more. Okay, good. And stomach. Bang. And outer arm cut. Everyone's favorite. They buried fifth. Hit their arm. Boop. Do it again because it's fun. Boop. Inner arm cut. Swung inner arm cut. She's going to hit horizontally, not rising. Bang. Hand is in fourth position. Goes back. Now she's going to do it with a false edge. She's going to swing it and cut from the elbow, just like she was murdering that hat rack. Bang. Big, hard cut. So the difference here is that when I'm in fifth, I'm here. It's a defense for the head. It is not third, but a little bit sloppy. It's not high third. It's not Arlo's high third from previous book or shop owns. So make sure you have those angles so you can practice making the swings you need in order to get the angles you need. All right, so we're gonna compile this up into one bigger, longer video, just so it gets out there fast as a thank you for putting up with us hiatus-wise. And then we're going to start filming a little bit more often. Thank you for your patience, y'all, and have fun and go do the thing. We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.